Hey guys, hey guys, Gary J here. Today we're looking at something kind of special, and that's a hurricane lantern. And uh, this is a very special hurricane lantern. This is a lantern uh, made in West Germany by a fellow by the name of Hermann Neier. Now, that's N-E-I-R, which I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, uh, not like the Germans do. But uh, he created a, a factory back in 1902 uh, making uh, the uh, these type of lanterns. And he made them in all different sizes. And uh, they were very uniquely and wonderfully made. And uh, they're a collector's item today. Uh, if you can find uh, one of his lanterns. And uh, the name of the lantern is basically, he calls it... Uh, uh, your hand, which uh, is, let you read it right here, uh, F-E-U-E-R, which is, in English, we would say that's Führer, or, but it's pronounced Your, I think, in uh, German, Your hand, and Your means fire, so fire in the hand, basically. And maybe you can't see, uh, right here is a, there's a person's hand cut with flames coming out of it. And uh, right here on this cap right here where you put the kerosene in is a hand cupped with flames coming out of it. And I thought that was really a nice taste right there. Um, and right here it says uh, model 175. And that would be the model of this. And then W Germany, which is West Germany. And over here, uh, the wording is super baby, super at the top, and then baby here, which is this particular version, which came out in 1933, 1933. And uh, right here, we have the word uh, Sternfest, and uh, that means steady or storm proof. That's the meaning of that, storm proof. So, it, I like the the way it's designed. I like the 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 way they uh, made the logos and and stuff for this too. And you see right there, Führer, which is fire, and then hand, fire hand, and then in the middle, a hand holding uh, flames. Just an incredible idea there. I like the way they did that. So. Anyway, this is uh, really an incredible uh, lantern right here. Again, they come in all different sizes. The Atom was the smallest one, six and a half inches, I believe. And, and soldiers used them on their belts and so forth. And they were used as signals and things of that nature. And so this is just really a nice one here. And uh, they are collectibles. And people who like the history of lanterns and things of that nature, it's uh, really interesting. So I'm going to take the globe out of this one and show you how this design is supposed to work. Everything on this lantern serves a purpose. There's nothing here that doesn't have to be here for this lantern to work as a hurricane lantern or stormproof lantern. And that's really interesting, the, how that works and how it was designed. Okay. Okay, guys, I took the globe here off of the lantern to try to show you how a storm lantern or hurricane lantern works. Everything that you see on this lantern is there for a reason. It all has a specific function to it, a purpose to it. Okay. Now, this lantern... Uh, was made by Herman Nyer, or I'm probably butchering his last name. It's N N I E R, and uh, he started the company back in 1902. And again, this was known as the uh, Your Hand, which in the F E U R of um, Führer or Your. I think in German it's pronounced your means fire and then hand, fire 
in hand, which means fire in the hand, maybe, which makes this one about eight inches tall. Uh, they have one smaller called the Atom, which is like six and a half inches tall. They have various styles of lanterns uh, from uh, the model number 202, 201, 327, 205, and then they go from different heights and so forth and different purposes. And uh, so that these particular lanterns are hard to find. And, uh, but the, you, you can find cheaper lanterns than this right here, but this is more collector's lantern here. Uh, when you get into kind of the German made stuff like this. Uh, so we look at this, we'll just start at the the top of it, I guess. Uh, the top part here is called the chimney. It's got holes here and on the other side of it. And this is kind of a stack right here that sets down on top of the globe right here. And it's got holes right here and those holes serve a purpose. Uh, just like the chimney holes serve a purpose. These right here are not handles. These right here are, are hollow tubes that serve a specific function. And we'll talk about that. And this base plate right here uh, holds the bottom of your globe right here. And on the base plate right here, it has holes in the bottom of it all the way around. These holes all the way around the bottom of this base plate serve a particular function too. And these wires right here, crisscross, hold your globe in place and that's you know the function of those. And of course you have your, your reservoir here and they use kerosene in these uh, lanterns back in the day, which was one of your first petroleum products. Sometimes they use car gasoline in these lanterns. Note this, this is the Super Baby, which was made in 1933, this design, 1933. And the reason I mentioned that they used car gasoline is because if you think of T-models in the old cars of the 1930s, remember that these lanterns started coming out in 1902. But the gasoline back in 1920s and 30s had really low octane. It's nothing like today's gasoline. They had maybe 30 or 40 octane. So they were really, they were not as combustible as today's gasoline of what, 89 to 93 octane. So they could get away with it back then. So how does this work? And the, and the whole purpose of a hurricane lantern is to keep the flame burning here on the wick and not going out. That is the whole purpose of the hurricane lantern. That's the whole idea of its design, unlike any other type of lantern. So, how does that work? Well, we'll start at the bottom this time. This is your fuel reservoir. You put your kerosene, that's your fuel. Uh, you put your globe back in here. Now, you can take the globe out and wash it and clean it and whatever. Now, this is, we'll look at this globe right here a second, because this is really nice. Um, and you see at the top, it says Fuhrer hand which or your is pronounced in German I think uh, your hand which means fire hand and uh, it says uh, like model 175 and then Gen it looks like Jenna but it's pronounced Enna E-N-A instead of J-E-N-A glass which is super hard glass and I know my hands are dirty from working on some stuff today but uh this is a special glass that's really hard because it gets really hot from the flames and so forth. So that's in a glass. And I've seen some of these globes go for like $60. I've seen some of these lanterns go for like $250. Because if you look at things made back in the 1933 or, you know, farther back than that, that were made by uh, Eurohan Lantern Company, uh, they can be real expensive collectibles. So, another thing too was right here, I like was the uh, cap right here where you take the cap off, put the fuel in here. Uh, it's got a hand right here that's holding, that uh, is holding flames right there. And maybe that'll be clear enough for you to see. 
So again, we're talking about these holes right here, and the purpose of those holes was to let oxygen and air come in here and cool this globe because it gets really hot. So that's the purpose of the holes right here to cool this globe, uh, glass globe right here, so it doesn't get too hot. And the wire right here that crisscrosses holds your globe in place, and then you got the stack right here which has holes in it, and those holes serve a purpose uh, that helps. Uh, they can suck in air to a certain extent. And this top part fits down snugly on top of your globe here. And this bottom part uh, covers the bottom of your globe uh, to protect your flame. And you've got that wide wick. See how wide the wick is? The wide wick makes a lot of sense when you think about the flame, instead of having a candle with one little flame on it, you've got a wide flame right here. So the, you're going to have a wide flame, kind of like a wall, uh, a fire, and it's going to be a lot brighter. So that's the reason you have a wide wick. That serves its purpose there. And you have a crank here. Some of the first lands didn't really have a crank system, but this right here cranks the wick up. If the wick is too high, you're going to get kind of a black soot from it. So you can turn it down until you get rid of the soot. And that's kind of how that works. Uh, so air can come in here, but it's not going to go down here generally. So if you got a flame here, the heat is going straight up and it's coming out the holes in the chimney. So all your heat's coming up here. And that's kind of a positive pressure. Well, that creates kind of a, maybe a negative pressure here somewhat. And when the negative pressure here sucks in air, and when it sucks in air, when it sucks in air through here, uh, these right here are hollow tubes. Both of them are hollow tubes. Air will be sucked up into here and come down through here. And as it comes down through here, and I'll show you this right here. There's a lever right here. You, push this lever down right here and what that lever does it lifts up this uh, base plate right here so that you have excess to put to light the wick you see the light the wick there but these tubes come down and you can't see it but there's they don't go into the reservoir itself so much as it's got a a channel that goes here underneath this metal piece right here and what's happening is that when air comes through here, if you're out, if it's 20 mile per hour wind outside, the globe is pressed down here and at the bottom is pressed up so that air can't hit the wick. And the way the air gets into uh, down here to feed the flame, you got to have oxygen to feed the flame, otherwise it's going out. This tube, these tubes right here on each side will the air will travel down through here and come inside here and feed the flame itself. So that's what these do. They feed the flame uh, with air or oxygen. Okay. And that's the purpose of these tubes right here. So you can have the wind blowing. It's not going to affect these flames because it's going to get its air from these tubes right here. And say the air is real turbulent. Well, if the air is real turbulent, then uh, when it has to go down these tubes, that turbulence is going to dissipate before it gets to here. So it's not going to be much of a problem. But this is pretty neat right here. Pull this all the way up, and your base plate goes back down. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how that works. Okay, and that's the design. Don't grab a lantern like this right here. They're big lanterns, too. They make them all different sizes, but don't grab this as a handle because it gets really hot from the flames right here. It travels through here. Now, these were pretty much a kind of a tin color lanterns, my understanding, uh, of your hand lanterns. And, but... Uh, Something about the tin that they use and some type of uh, corrosion uh, resistant stuff that they put on it 
they didn't have that when World War II started, and so they started painting these right here uh, to keep them from rusting. And so when you see them painted, they usually it means that they were uh, probably 1940s, 1941 or so uh, during the war. Uh, the ones that are painted, that's my understanding of it. And uh, on the top right here, Right here, it says uh, your hand, and then it says original, and then N I E R, Nier, or uh, however you pronounce that. That's the name of the fellow that invented this in 1902, um, Herman Nier. Again, Germans use a different language uh, than we do in English, uh, especially in Georgia. And soldiers would even carry like the atom, I think the atom, the smaller ones, they'd put them put those on their belt in in the military. Uh, they have a light source and also to signal. They made it very compact. So that may be the reason why they're so compact. But they're cute lanterns, and they are highly collectible lanterns, too, if you like lanterns. And I like anything with flames. But um, So I hope that gives you some idea of how these work and, and the beauty of lanterns and light itself. You know, when you look at uh, oil lamps, they go back 10,000 years, uh, those kind of small bowls with a, a wick in them and, and oil and uh, then you had candles come after that, and then you had one of the other inventions were uh, what they call um, just a regular kerosene lantern. Uh, the uh, regular lanterns, uh, just the ones with just a, a you know a long flash globe on them, are called like the flat wick lanterns. These were called the uh, cold black lanterns, cold black lanterns uh, design. So they had different names for them too. But just giving you an idea, hopefully, of the uniqueness of these lanterns right here. And I noticed at Walmart, they have some that look a little bit like this, and they're only like $8. Then they have the tubes right here as well on them at Walmart. I thought that was really cheap, eight bucks. Uh, but again, they allow you to be out in the wind and not have your lamp go out. And that's the whole purpose and design of the Hurricane Lantern here. So I hope this has been a little bit informative to you. Probably too much information for a lot of people. But uh, that's the beauty of lanterns. And again, they go back uh, to 1874. Like the first lantern, I think, was made like that. And... Uh, so, uh, just interesting th things to me anyway. Thanks for watching, guys. Gary J.